I wish more women came out, whether it was, you know, something golf related or business related or maybe a pregnancy or, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but just women should come together and support each other and have each other's backs. And, you know, we could conquer the world and get things accomplished and get things done. I can't believe it's finally here after months and months of planning this episode one of Like It Is. And when I first started this, there was no person, no doubt, who I wanted on with me the very first time. Obviously, you see her right here, Brittany Linsicum, a good friend. Uh, look, we can talk about your golf all day long, and you and I have done that a lot in the past, a multiple major champion. But, I, you know, I just I want to say, first of all, thank you. And not thank you just for being the first guest, but thank you for sticking up for me uh, privately and publicly, sticking up for, for women, for women's golf, for yourself. You are a role model. You're a friend. And I, I'm really thankful to have you here and to have you in my life, Brittany. Oh, right back at you, girl. This is great. I'm honored to be the first and I can't wait to spend a little time with you today. All right. Well, we get to chat. Um, so I want to start because I have this favorite quote and I talk about it a lot. Madeline Albright said something that was great, and she passed away, the first secretary, female secretary of state, uh, last month. She said that there's a special place in hell for women who don't support other women. And when I think of that quote, I mean, you're one of the first people who, who come to mind. I go back to what happened with me at, um, at a and and Mizuno and, and Golf Channel a, a couple of years ago, and you were right there publicly ready to go to war. <laughs> and we have gone to war together several times since. So, you know, I think my first question to you, because we've never really talked about it, where did sort of this fighter personality come from in you? Well, I think it's just, you know, wanting to support, support women in general, just you know, we've been friends for a long time. So when you see somebody getting attacked on, on social media or in just in the media in general, uh, it's hard to watch without having an opinion. So um, just when it all kind of went down, you know, I just it just was a natural instinct to kind of want to fire back and just kind of add my two cents um, just to try to make it a little bit better or try to give my side of the story or insight into what was happening or um, but again, just wanting to support you, wanting to support women, just backing ourselves. Um, just there was a whole lot of emotions that were going through me. And I, again, just wanted to support and try to be there for another female and, and try to do what was right. <laughs> and, and it's still ongoing. Look, we're going to get into social media because I think that that's a really interesting topic. Um why do you think that some women are silent? I, I know that people feel a certain way. I'm mm -hmm. sure that you get private uh, messages from people. A lot of people have said things to me privately that they don't say publicly. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that there is a lot of silence? I have no idea because, you know, it seems um, just looking at, you know, female tennis or female soccer players, like if they, if everyone came together for the same common goal, um, I feel like a lot gets accomplished. So there's, you don't have to do it on your own. It doesn't have to be scary to be one individual trying to change the world. It's going to take a team and an army of us to be able to get things done. Um, so I wish more women came out, whether it was, you know, something golf related or business related or maybe a pregnancy or, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but just women should come together and support each other and have each other's backs and, you know, we could conquer the world and get things accomplished and get things done. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that for, for us, I think that that's, that's part of the goal, um, not to stir things up, but really to get things done. I go back to the Mizuno issue and, and the outspokenness. I mean, you look at it now in the LPGA tour, Mizuno has a full-time rep. Mm. They now give money to the equipment trailer, which mm -hmm. I think is great. You know, I want to be able to give them credit, but sometimes it takes those sort of things. You just said something to me that's really interesting. And Christine Brennan from the USA Today is hopefully going to be my second guest. And she and I've had a lot of conversations about this. Christine has been in the sports media for a long time. And she said something that was really interesting, and I want your take on it. She told me months ago, can she imagine, and look, I'm going to use Nancy Lopez, and Nancy Lopez was my hero mm -hmm. as a child, but she said, can you imagine if Billie Jean King had been a golfer and Nancy Lopez had been a tennis player, hmm. how different the tours would be? I mean, I, I've always thought that that was brilliant. What's your response to that comment? Yeah, I mean, it would totally be different. We would, you know, be bridging that gap between the PGA Tour and, and making 
we're not trying to make equal money here. I feel like people get a little bit sidetracked with, oh, you know, we should be making equal money. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to just bridge the gap a little bit. Um, you know, when our payouts, you know, a couple hundred thousand for first place and they're making a million dollars, there's a little bit of a deficit there. So we're just trying to bridge that. But I mean, if we had Billie Jean King, man, I mean, again, the tour is doing great. We're going in the right direction. We're playing for more money. We're getting more network TV. We're doing so many wonderful things that just, you know, in my 18 years, I just wish it would go quicker. You know, I, I want to see results now. I want to leave the tour better than what it was when I first started. And, and it totally is. We're doing a great job. Um, the tour is definitely in a better place than it is, was, is now than it was, you know, 18 years ago. Um, but just want to see results quicker. So if we had somebody like Billie Jean King and then had the whole tour backing her, um, <laughs> we would get a lot of stuff accomplished. How is the tour different from when you started? Well, just, you know, more events on the schedule, um, more network TV. Obviously, the price, the pr- uh, price purses are going up. You know, obviously, the majors are all doubling or adding more money to their purses, which is incredible. You know, we're playing for more money. The last tournament of the year, CME, I think even if you make the cut, it's like $40,000 for last place, which is unheard of. Normally, it's just two, three thousand um, dollars <throat> So we're definitely, you know, going in the right direction. Mike Wan really helped get us in a great spot. And um, you know, hopefully our new commissioner can kind of take over that role and keep us going up. We know with new tournaments coming out, maybe not starting at the, you know, 1.5, maybe going closer to a $3 million starting point, which would be awesome. And I'm um, just, just trying to get the money and, and more coverage, I guess, of us on TV. We'll get into TV in a minute because there's a <laughs> lot to go there. I know we've yeah. had some discussions about that, but I was glad to see Danielle Kang address the issue that you were just talking about. She was referring to a tournament, I believe it was LA uh, week prior. And she said, she came out and said, and she was honest. She said, look, I'm fortunate because I'm in a pretty good financial position, but she was explaining the fact that, you know, she made the cut. She didn't play great. And I think, I think she won $7,000 and she said, I'm not even going to break even. You look at one through 10 on the money list and yeah, they're making a lot of money, but it's when you get down to 80th place Mm -hmm. or, or 90th place on the money list and you're not paying your bills. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's expensive to be out there. Mm -hmm. So look, I know you've had a lot of success and thankfully you haven't had to have those lean years, but you know what it's like. You've talked to these young players. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to come out there? You don't have a sponsor. Mm -hmm. You're making cuts, but you're not winning. You're not top 10 in terms of financial position. How difficult is it? It's very difficult. Like you said, top 80 keeps their full tour card, but top 80 is, is, possibly not even breaking even or or making money to put away, you know, for retirement or for future stuff. So um, it's really crazy to see, you know, Danielle was hundred percent right. LA is very expensive. Our rentals, um, we even shoved a bunch of caddies. I stayed with a bunch of caddies just because it was a lot cheaper. I didn't travel with my family. I'm just trying to save, you know, a few dollars here and there. Um, But yeah, if you're only making a few thousand dollars at the end of the day, by the time you pay your caddy, your airfare, your Airbnb is all that, you know, you might be breaking even. So again, we're just trying to bridge the gap a little bit. You know, it's not, we're not trying to get, you know, equal pay, even though that would be fantastic one day. Um, but just trying to bridge it a little bit. Um, so if you do make the cut, you're making some money. Um, I actually had a conversation with my fa- financial advisor a couple of days ago, just, you know, obviously pregnant with baby number two, trying to figure out you know, if I can, if if I'm going to be able to travel with two babies, or if it might be time to start thinking about retiring, which breaks my heart, I don't want to even think about that. Um, But just talking with him, like, you know, I've saved as much as I possibly could over the years. And even now, he said, you still can't fully retire, we still need to do something to have a little bit of an income, which 18 years on tour is a long time. And I feel like I'm a saver, I don't spend money frivolously on things. You know, I, I obviously have a two year old now I have a child on the way. So trying to save as much as we possibly can, but I still can't retire. So, I mean, I know I'm, I'm only 36, so I'm, I'm definitely young, but, um, you know, some of these guys on the PGA, they're making millions upon millions of dollars and they could retire after a few years. So again, just trying to bridge the gap doesn't need to be equal, but, um, we're, we're trying to go that direction, which would be awesome. Well, and it's not just the money. Um, you know, I recently posted about healthcare. I mean, obviously I've, I've yeah. pretty good insight to it. Um, you all get an $1,850 stipend each year. <laughs> and again, right. when I say this, you know, somebody fired back at me on Twitter saying, oh yeah, well, the PGA Tour should just hand out health care. I mean, look, 
I think it's great. That, that would be PGA, nice. Yeah, right. I think that it's great <laughs> that the PGA Tour players have it. I mean, yeah. the reason that I said it is to make people aware that you all don't. I mean, eighteen hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. You have a daughter. You mm-hmm. have a you have a child on the way. Mm-hmm. How do you, are you paying out of pocket, or is it are you on D's plan? How does that work? There is a lot of players, uh, especially caddies, who do not have health care that just kind of wing it, which is so scary. I mean, obviously, if something happens to them. Um, it's just thousands upon thousands of dollars they'll have to pay. So I am under my husband's um, insurance, which is fantastic. He has a great insurance policy. Um, so that's been a super blessing for our family. But um, there's definitely, like I said, a lot of players, a lot of caddies who don't even have coverage on their self or maybe a very minimal coverage, uh, which again is scary because we travel a lot. You know, things happen. You can get hurt at any moment and need some big surgery and it's going to cost you a lot of money. So um you know, healthcare is their insurance is definitely a thing that we all would love to see, you know, moving forward with the tour, you know, trying to get that a little bit better. Um, even our maternity policy a few years ago, it wasn't super great. And now we're, it's finally, you know, we're obviously a women's organization. So that needs to be pretty buckled up. But um, yeah, so we're trying to get them all on the line, but uh, insurance would definitely be a nice one. I hope that one day I can get the um, the commissioner on, the new commissioner of the mm. LPGA Tour, Molly Marco Salmon. Um, obviously, be a, being a okay. woman, she understands it. Um, but I think that part of what this podcast is about is to really allow her to, and look, I'm going to cover all sports and all different avenues, but golf is very personal to me, clearly. Mm-hmm. And I, I know about it and, and know about the tour, but I, I just wonder from a standpoint, what can players do? Obviously these things cost money. Um, mm-hmm. but what can you all do to sort of rally around and maybe have some sort of, um, ability to, to talk to the commissioner or talk to the executives? Do you think mm-hmm. that things like that could steps be taken forward to really, um, help with issues like healthcare? That's a great question. And Molly is so wonderful. She's ever since she came out, she said, you know, what can I be doing? How can I help you? You know, she's, she wants to be doing all the right things, just doesn't know which order maybe to do them or how to go about doing them yet, which I don't either. If I knew how to make the tour better, how to make us more money, um, obviously I would be doing it, but I definitely think it has to do with the whole, you know, all the women, we all need to come together. It all needs to be a group thing. It can't just be yourself and myself and maybe like two other women, you know, trying to go fight a battle that we need the whole tour to back us. So um, I think it's a lot of just all of us coming together saying we deserve this. This is what we need. Let's try to figure out a way to do it. And then just all of us coming together to do it is, is the best. Do you all talk about this? I mean, I know you obviously you're close with a lot of players, but Mm -hmm. do you talk about it at tournaments or maybe any sort of ideas to make things better or to present to the LPGA? It doesn't seem that we talk about it that much, which is sad. I feel like we talk about things really strongly around player meetings, which happens a couple times a year, um, maybe two or three times a year. And there's a lot of like ideas thrown out and, and everyone's kind of has their voice there. And we talk about stuff for maybe like a week or two after. And then it just kind of like lingers off again in, into the distance. And then it just doesn't seem to ever, ever change, which is really unfortunate. Okay. Well, one thing I know that you and I would like to see change for the better is television coverage, the number of cameras. <laughs> I'm, I'm very fortunate now because I'm doing work for PGA Tour Live and they're awesome. I mean, I mm-hmm. first of all, just the fact that they're having me do work is great after everything mm-hmm. that I've been through. Um, but I've paid more attention to the coverage and the number of cameras, the quality of the broadcast and being able to show things. How passionate mm-hmm. are you about improving these LPGA broadcasts? Huge. Knowing what I see out on the golf course at an LPGA event and then watching a few PGA tour events um, just here and there, it's so night and day. And I hate when people on social media will say, Oh, you're, you don't get the, you're something about, you know, it's more exposure, makes more money. Okay. Well, we can't get more exposure if we don't have more than five cameras following us at any time. When you watch a PGA tour event, you don't watch them missing three footers, you know, for par or, or the hitting bad shots. I feel like we see a lot of bad shots, of women's golf because there's nobody else to show because we only have five cameras. When you watch the men's event, the guys are making birdies on every single hole. It's like they make it look so darn easy um, that I try to just like take it all in, but it's obviously not that easy. They just have more cameras and more abilities to show more shots. So um, it's definitely frustrating. I know we were in a a crappy 10 year agreement for TV there for a while. I'm not a hundred percent sure which direction we've gone now. I think we're out of that. uh, Thank God. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just the lack of cameras. You know, we just people think that we have what the PGA has, and we just it, we just don't have. We can't get the exposure if we can't get on TV. Do you think it would make a, a big difference in the ratings? Oh, absolutely. I mean, then you would be seeing more players, more fans would, we have so many great athletes on the LPGA tour that nobody ever gets to see because again, we don't have the cameras. So um, they tend to follow, you know, the names that everyone knows. Obviously those girls are the ones that are playing good every week. So that makes sense. Um, But there's girls even just a little bit down, like Marina Alex winning last week. Like I don't even remember seeing her name on the leaderboard. And then I looked on social media and then she won. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, that wasn't even somebody that I felt like I had seen or was shown on TV. Um, and then she won. So it's just so crazy that any player at any given time can win, but we didn't get to see too much of her because she probably wasn't in contention until the last day. And then there wasn't enough cameras to show. (laughs) So I've been fighting this TV battle, not really from the live broadcast side, because as you know, I I worked in studio mainly, and then I would occasionally come Mm -hmm. out and report. And one thing that always drove me crazy at golf channel and still does because I watch it and it still happens and I don't know if, if I've ever said this to you, but um, we would do a six block show. So an hour, hour long golf central. And unless something major was happening, they basically just held a slot for you all in the third block. So that meant at the bottom mm-hmm. of the show, and it was kind of fill in the blank. Let's figure out, you know, what can we talk about? Everything else mm-hmm. was prepared. So it was like this last minute sort of afterthought. And I always tried to push for, why don't we mix this up? Why don't, why don't we show something right off of the top? It could be a great shot, a, a soundbite, something to pique interest. And then you could put it down later in the show right. if you want. Yeah. But it's just sort of that lack of creativity mm. to give you all the exposure. That said, here's the question. How mm. much do you think fans and, and the general golf public, how much are they missing out? because of sort of those oversights in terms of, I personally don't think that people realize how talented you all are. Yeah. You know, I hate when, you know, I went to the airport the other day and was checking in, I was going to Hawaii and the guy was like, Oh, so great. And I was like, yeah, this is going to be great, but I'm going for a golf tournament. He was like, well, why aren't you playing in the masters? And I was like, well, because I'm a girl, first of all, um, just funny how they just don't know, like women, some guys don't know that women play golf or we have our own tour and, um, <clears throat> it's funny cause I can hit the same exact shots as most PGA tour players can. I just can't hit the ball 350 yards. Like it's genetics. Like I am a woman. That's a man. Like I can have, I can hit the flop shot. I can hit the putt putt that he can hit. I can hit the shot from under the trees. I do that a lot. You know, I, I got all the same shots. I can do the exact same thing. I just can't hit it 350. So, um, it's super frustrating when you, when they try to compare the two or, Um, I don't know. It's just, again, I can do the same exact things as they can do. (laughs) So it definitely gets frustrating, but, um, you bring up a good point. So you all are entertainers, you're athletes, but you're also entertainers. I would personally Mm -hmm. say if the LPGA could improve in, in one way to make the product more marketable and exciting for the average fan is to see some more excitement. I mean, not that I want you know, sort of the Brooks Kepka, uh, Bryson DeChambeau <laughs> battles going on out there. <clears throat> yeah. But there's a lot of levelness. Do you think that, do you think that seeing a little bit more personality out there would help you all? I think so. I mean, there, there, so many of the girls have their own little quirky, funny things about them or funny things that they can do that um, I feel like when they get on the golf course, it's just kind of more robots and they just kind of go through their motions and they play their game. And, um, but you know, when you play practice rounds with these girls, I mean, they, they say funny things, funny things happen. I don't know if we need to have like a reality show or <laughs> something just to kind of get them out of their shell. Um, but again, you play practice rounds with any of them. I mean, they're, they're awesome, super fun. Um, everyone has their own kind of quirkiness about them. And, um, but yeah, when, when you watch it on golf, it's very, um, it's kind of watching like Annika Sorenstam back in the day. It's just kind of see ball, hit ball. And there's like no emotion, whether she made a birdie or a double, you never knew, uh, where she stood cause she was always so focused. But, um, I think it, I think it would be really fun for the game if we had kind of, you know, something like that, where 
even if we faked it, maybe <laughs> just to have like some little fight going on to kind of you know make it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> I grew up watching Dottie Pepper, and I when I played, I had I kind of had a temper, and I loved Dottie because Dottie kind of had a temper. Mm. So maybe if you could just go out there and do a Henrik Stenson and break a club over your knee, I, I think it'd be a top 10 sports center. I know your parents would probably be I, upset. I, I think it would be worth the fine. I think you're right. <laughs> I'll, I'll pitch in if you do it. Okay. Perfect. Golf courses. It's another thing I think with the PGA Tour, you know, they play these great venues. I mean, obviously you mentioned, mm -hmm. you mentioned the Masters and, um, mm -hmm. you know, I know everybody's hyped up about the Augusta National Women's <clears throat> Amateur, which I think is great. I mean, good for them, but the LPGA, I, come on. I mean, can you imagine yeah. what that would do for the LPGA Tour if you all played Augusta National? Um, yeah. Is is <clears throat> that something that you think that that you all need to focus on and maybe the commissioner in terms of getting to these venues that really um, impress the everyday golf fan? Yeah. Uh, first of all, if anybody's listening, I've never played Augusta. So if you want to take me, I'm totally available. Any, and I will take a week off. No problem. Um, but yeah, you know, we're, we're the majors KPMG is coming out um, where they've been taking us have all been amazing. We're definitely playing better golf courses. The U S open list of golf courses is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but then you still have, and I, I'm not going to list any of them because I'd probably get in trouble, but uh, we play a lot of like, I want to say just like your muni golf course, like you're just every day at home golf course that you and your friends would go play. Um, that's not tour quality of the PGA tour would never even step foot in some of these locations, um, which then leads to, you know, crappy greens and crappy fairways and lift clean in place sometimes because the fairways are so yucky. Um, just places that we shouldn't be going. It's like a disrespect. I feel like to us that even, to take us there first of all um and then trying to play golf on those kind of golf courses is not easy so um you know when you when you watch where the pga goes they have to hit great shots yes get it on the green whatever then all you got to do is just putt the ball and get it on the right line and it's going to go in the hole because the greens are so pure so um some of these golf courses we go to that are you know poana or just not you know maybe the summer was too hot and they just the greens didn't grow in the way they should and um, you know, there's lift clean a place on the greens, you know, it's just, it makes it that much more challenging to um, bring out your full potential when you have to kind of work your way around some of these not so nice golf courses. So we would love to see, you know, better golf courses being played or just golf courses that are maybe maintained a little bit better. Um, because like I said, we, we definitely go to, there's some on the schedule that are like, gosh, that golf course is not very nice. <laughs> I always roll my eyes when I see people comment to something that's been posted on Twitter and they say, oh yeah, but the ladies, you know, they're playing on these golf courses and the greens are only rolling nine or 10, you know, they have it super easy. I'm like, do you play golf? Because that's a lot harder than if they're yeah. rolling 13, <clears throat> you know, there's a big difference. You absolutely. take that every single time. Oh, absolutely. I just played this morning with a friend and. They said the greens were rolling a 10 or 11. They were probably like an eight or a nine. Um, but you have to make, you have to make a full shoulder turn. You have to make this huge swing to get the ball to only go, you know, 30 feet, which is just not natural. It just doesn't seem natural to have to swing that hard. So if you give me a 30 footer at a green that's running a 13, like the cart path or like this table that I'm sitting at, all you got to do is get it online. It's going to get to the hole. It's going to go in. So, um, yeah, I would take fast greens over slow greens any day of the week. Okay, let's get into, you mentioned it, and we've talked about it several times, social media. <laughs> <laughs> we, I've tried to actually calm down because, you know, after everything mm -hmm. happened with Golf Channel, I was, you know, I was so furious and I would get in it with people and I try not to do that <laughs> as much anymore because all I'm doing yeah. is giving them a voice, but sometimes yeah. I just can't help myself. It amazes me. I can see people coming after me, you know, like I... I get it. It always blows my mind when they come after you. I'm like, dude, she's a multiple <laughs> major winner. Like, what yeah. are you thinking? And I've, I look, I've seen young golfers yep. come after you. Um, and that, that part of it really amazes me as a, as a woman, as a mother to a young woman, as a professional athlete, who's had a ton of success how do you still laugh and smile about it? Cause, cause I know, cause I know it, I know it bugs yep. you sometimes. How do you, how do you react? You to know, it? I try, I always try to reply back to everybody. I feel like 
if somebody took the time to write me the message, like I want to reply back, obviously there's the people that I either block or just don't have time for. And I try not to talk to those people. But um, if it's about a topic that I know personally, like how my tour works or how much money we make or something that I know for a fact how it works. And then somebody tries to give me advice or tell me like, oh, you need to work harder or get more exposure or, you know, it's not the same. Like the men have done things differently than the women and that's why they're getting paid more money. <clears throat> Stuff like that. It just, it's hard to swallow. And then I, I tend to reply, which is not great uh, just because it gets you fired up and it's just not worth the time. Obviously that person would never say that to my face. I've never had a fan come up and, and have these co uh, conversations face to face before. It's always somebody hiding behind their computer or, or their phone, you know, writing these nasty messages to you. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard not to go back at them, but then, you know, most times I try to let it go. Like you're learning how to do, but you're so great at it. So I, I love seeing your posts and, um, <laughs> Because you're you're 100 right too. You know how the tour works. You know how things operate, and you're, it's not like you're blowing smoke or you know telling them lies. Like you're telling them the facts and and how it is. So, and I saw uh, Daniel Kang retweeted somebody the other day and just was trying to like, how dare you write me this message? So it's unfortunate that we a lot of us have to do that, um, or maybe it's just we're girls and we're more sensitive and we we read the comments because we want to interact with our fans and we want to you know, have that relationship with them if they're going to take the time to write us those ni most times nice messages um, that we want to reply back. Yeah. So then you don't, you happen to read those nasty ones. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's the men get them and they just ignore them or if we're just more sensitive and we want to reply and stick up for ourselves. Um, but yeah, it's hard not to reply back to the ones that, that drive you crazy. Do you worry, and I'm just going to make an assumption here because I, I don't think that it, that it bothers you. I mean, Look, cer certain things bother me. I mean, they don't, I don't, I don't linger right. with them, but I felt like when I was, when I was going back and forth a lot with people, I kind of had, and I'm like you, I try to respond mm -hmm. to everybody, but then when it would get heated, then I would get heated and then I would stay in it, which I try not <laughs> to do anymore. Um, but I kind of, when I was doing it, I felt like there was this sort of dark cloud mm -hmm. over me and and it was difficult. And that's why I kind of stepped away from it because there was just so much, so mm -hmm. much negativity and toxicity that it, it was lingering. Do you worry about any of your fellow players or as a mother to a young daughter and another child on the way? Um, you know, mental health is a really mm -hmm. big deal right now. And it's, it always has been, but thankfully people are speaking about it more. Do you, are there people out on tour that, that you worry about um, just in that regard? Cause look, what you all do mm -hmm. is really hard. And I say that to people all the time. They're like, Oh, I want to be a professional <laughs> golfer. I'm like, no, you don't. Cause it's, you know, you don't, they don't yeah. realize everything that goes into it. But part of this whole social media effect now too, for you all is, is the impacts of what you're saying. Do you worry about some of your fellow tour players? Oh, absolutely. There's a few, obviously I'm not going to name names, but there's a few who have gone through, um, these kind of situations and, and are taking things for these or talking to, you know, specialists trying to work through these deals um, because it, A, the tour is lonely. If you don't have a good support system around you, like my parents still travel most weeks with me, <clears throat> obviously now helping me with my daughter. Um, so I always constantly have somebody around me, which is awesome. Um, but a lot of girls, you know, have to travel by themselves or stay by themselves and it gets lonely out there, especially if you're a new rookie coming out and you don't have anybody, maybe you're coming from another country um, and you're trying to figure it out all on your own, it gets lonely. And then just one thing leads to another. And maybe a few messages here or there on social media, or maybe you're not playing well and just a combination of everything kind of goes together. Um, you can definitely get in a dark place very quickly. So, um, like I said, I have a great support around me, you know, my friends and family, even my tour friends, you know, we, I feel like we're always asking each other, calling each other, like I'll use Brittany Lang. Like I haven't seen her for a couple of weeks cause she hasn't played but I still constantly call her every couple of days and just say, Hey, like she's, she's fine. Like she's not one going through it, but just, we, we seem to check in with each other just to try to make sure everyone's feeling okay. Or, you know, why aren't you playing this week? Like what's going on? And, and um, just trying to make sure everyone's okay. Cause yeah, it's, it's a big thing right now. And um, it's so great that women are, especially women are talking about it and bringing it to light. Um, just that it's not something you have to go through on your own. You know, there's a lot of people dealing with it and there's a ways to, to kind of make it better. So it's great that people are talking about and talking about their stories or posting their stories. 
um, because you never know it might help somebody else going through the same situation. Just a few more questions because I know your daughter's coming, your mom's <laughs> dropping her off. Um, speaking of, you know, being a mom, what, how, what's it like for you? I, I can't, you know, we talk about the yeah. travel and I've seen it in person. I mean, I've seen the whole, <laughs> <laughs> the whole show, mom, yep. dad, every, um, how difficult is it? Not just, not just the travel, but being yeah. away from her now, now you're mm-hmm. pregnant. Um, what, what has this been like? And has it, do you think it's affected? Oh, 100% for sure. Um, again, I I wouldn't change anything for the world. Obviously I've, I feel like I've waited my whole life to be married and have children, you know, start a family one day. So I'm super blessed to be going through that right now. Um, just learning how to kind of do my job and do the mom thing at the same time is very challenging. Um, but yeah, I, I say it's been super easy, but again, I've had my mom and dad, like I said, come out almost every single week. We do have a great uh, daycare on tour. Smuckers has provided us the daycare on tour. They've been out there. I don't even know how it's been out there at least 18 years that I've been out there. We've had daycare. So um, I'm sure it's been way, way longer. Um, So that's a great option if I ever needed that. Um, But my mom and dad normally, Emery rides around the stroller. She'll watch all 18 holes of golf with me, which is super fun. Um, (laughs) It's great having her out. Um, It's harder to balance, you know, does she sleep in for my morning rounds and then she comes to my afternoon rounds and then, you know, packing her bag, getting her ready, getting me ready, and then trying to focus on golf, but then her little cute face is over in the crowd. So trying to like, look at her, you know, um, there's definitely a lot of emotions. Obviously, second baby is just going to make it that much harder. Obviously, I still have my family support, but trying to juggle, you know, two babies is, is going to be quite interesting. But um, I think the hardest part is I was going to actually leave her for these last three events. Um, she was going to be home for all three weeks. So I wasn't going to see her for three weeks. Um, that's the hardest part, I think, is, is when she's home more so than the difficulties of having her out at a tournament and, and kind of juggling all that, um, just not having her out. But then obviously when she's out with me, my husband's missing her. And when she's home, I'm missing her. So um, we got to we say we split custody, even though we're happily married and, and everything's fine. But um, we just joke about it. But um, it's definitely something that, you know, taking it's going to take time to get used to or you know, maybe I got to figure out a new plan moving forward. Well, I love D. We all love him. And I know he recently lost his mother, your mother-in-law. So yeah. we've all been thinking about him and, and praying for all you guys. Cause I know it's been yeah. tough. Um, what's life like for you after golf? That's a great question. If you have any ideas, I I'm definitely up for, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have ideas. Like I've already nominated, I'm going to call Molly and, uh, Perfect. you know, you're going to have a role with the LPGA. I don't know if they'd want me. I feel like I would get like, I feel like a lot of people would hate me because I would be too direct and like want to get stuff done. And when something didn't get done, I would be very upset about it. <laughs> That's how you get things done. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and you need to be in broadcasting because you're such, you're so great at speaking and you've been so great on this. And like, I could talk for hours, but I want to limit these podcasts. I don't want them to be that long. And this is the first one. So Brittany, you're awesome. You're awesome for women's golf. You're a great friend. You were the first player, male or female, to give me their cell phone number when I first came out with Golf Channel. (laughs) And so you always have a special place in my heart for many reasons, but you just welcomed me quickly. Mm. You know, it's one of those things that when you're new out there, you really have to work to earn relationships and, and people trust you and get to know you, but you did it quickly. So you know, again, I just say thank you for so many things because you're a great human being. You're a great friend. You're a great role model and you are wonderful for, for women's golf. So keep doing exactly what you're doing. Don't ever change. Okay. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to be your first guest. Thank you for allowing me to be your friend. Uh, it's been a great relationship and I, I enjoy our friendship very much.